good evening and a warm welcome to you all um, and i am going to present on data driven consumer experience today i had taken a look at the number the kind of panel discussions that is going to happen uh, as part of this uh, day's proceedings so i will set the context uh, keep my presentation at a very very lower common denominator and uh, i am sure that the next panel speakers are going to take the uh, presentations as well as the knowledge sharing at a much higher level so essentially i would like to start with an anecdote uh, when we talk about data driven consumer experience uh, in us target is a large uh, retailer uh, very data driven uh, they do they have a phenomenal level of analytics they received a consumer complaint a father came to the store and fought with the manager my daughter is uh, hardly about 16 and uh, she is Uh, doing a school education and you guys have been sending her wrong promotions she has been getting uh, baby cribs you know the the push cards what a pregnant lady is likely to kind of you know buy and you have been sending her advertisements like this uh, what nonsense this is i mean she is a school going kid why are you kind of doing all this so the manager was little taken aback because he has never faced such kind of customer complaints before and uh, they he went back forwarded the complaint internally and it bubbled up all the way to the team which was sending the promotions and uh, it is actually the name is mr andrew pole and uh, he was responsible for analytics and marketing and uh, he had a lot of data taken from customer behavior today they, they take the customers pin code card number such kind of parameters they attach what people normally buy so they were able to create a mapping so they have their algorithms have figured out that uh, a person uh, who has been uh, purchasing lot of unscented body lotions uh, folic acid supplements and uh, they were buying lot of creams all that they the person was likely to be pregnant and naturally the next step evolution was they were buying uh, baby clothes uh, you know buying lot of diapers and all the stuff so this they were able to predict with the data whatever they had and with the data irrespective of the age of the customer they had been sending promotions so andrew was very confident i mean in fact their algorithms had about 87% match rate and they were even able to go and predict exactly which trimester the customer is in and when they are likely to deliver a baby and all the stuff they had that level of accuracy in predictions and he said that i am sure this the girl who were has been there must be pregnant within a matter of 2 weeks the father came back apologized saying that i didn't know what was happening at my home right my daughter was indeed pregnant i am trying to sort things out i mean how she did with whom i mean the, these all things i need to sort out i apologize i mean i think you guys were fairly accurate in predicting that even what a father didn't know uh, the retail store was able to uh, you know switch the data and make interpretations out of it so today after that incident actually what target did was they had actually toned down their advertisements they didn't want to go saying that i know for sure the customer needs this so i will go and promote whatever their insights came they didn't want to go back and create such kind of uh, disruptions within the families right so what they did was next time a person who is likely to be pregnant they also start putting in other advertisements something like a furniture uh, unrelated advertisement so that the the finding becomes little dissipated they started doing it consciously so today when we have data with us that's a power a consumer's data can bring in then it is up to us whether to use it like a weapon and try to go back and go a little intrusive onto the customer and their experiences are we trying to enhance the life of the overall customer by giving them appropriate recommendations and trying to do that so with this context i think i will start my presentation not a major one but it's a quite a short one so like i hope you can keep the time so essentially what are we talking here we are talking about understanding let's have a common understanding of what is customer experience and i use the term cx customer experience and the touch points that generate data and the role of data in offering a greater uh, customer experience and uh, the challenges today what we have right now so 
so customer experiences how a customer feels right during and after interacting with a brand today uh, i'm sure we have i could see that uh, we we are coming from multiple industries we have tvs we have uh, manufacturing industries pharmaceutical software we we are a mixed bag of people over here when we talk about customer interaction the customer interaction is not happening for example uh, for example an automobile industry for example the customer experience does not start at the dealership it starts much before that it starts at the stage where the customer gets to know about the product right and it continues all the way even after purchasing the brand or purchasing a competitor brand and what people generally talk about after purchasing it right it continues there the customer experience continues uh, tomorrow a an youngster uh, buys say for example uh, an enfield classic 350 and suddenly his friend circle starts saying that boy boy um infield avanga he could have bought a ktm or he could have bought a harley or he could have bought something else the experience is going to reduce because his circle of friends do not share the same values what this person expected so what essentially it means is that a customer experience has starts from the awareness stage consideration like which is the brand i want to go and um, buy and preferences narrowing down to this is the kind of brand the two three choices which i want to buy uh, point of purchase and after purchase comes the loyalty and advocacy advocacy happens when the customer becomes a brand ambassador for the brand and kind of goes about talking to the whole world so the customer experience that happens at every stage of customer interaction lot of brands great products but the point of purchase uh, is not right the dealership experience is not good the dealer uh, sales person is not knowledgeable or they don't show the interest so naturally what happens is the sale gets missed out or sometimes the product can be a mediocre one but we've seen that with the great dealership experience people were able to have higher conversions build greater relationships and this happens during purchase uh, are there any frictions if i talk about a banking product uh, many of the time a customer comes for a loan inquiry if we are not able to solve the problem then and there and kind of ensure give a good smoother experience uh, the customer is likely to go away today when we talk about very highly competed narrow differentiated products almost like a commodity uh, the the point of uh, purchase experience is really really important and post purchase also after purchase what happens are there services good post purchase experience is good is the product performing well all this kind of you know reaches out and creates summarized under customer experience and the customer experience as we see is uh, it's very dynamic i think this one behaves on its own are you prasthut is theek i think technology plays <laughs> makes it difficult uh, it's showing some error i want to show it in dynamic how will you bring it there it doesn't happen it's it's okay we we'll go to the previous one so the customer experience as we see is a very very dynamic one it is not static i have done the sale and uh, everything is over and done with no it doesn't happen like that the the experience continues it is a living moment of truth every moment where a customer comes in after purchase am i given the same consistent experience am i there right and as a digital practitioners how I, how am i going to know that the customers experience <coughs> at the point of purchase is good or the customers experience is not up to the mark so that puts us lot of challenges for either the product team or the customer service team who is handling the digital part of it to read the data coming out of it what the customer is writing in social media that is also equally important customer came to the showroom came to the branch Uh, came to the outlet and they didn't have a great experience they are going to write and put three star or they are going to say the experience is not great so these are all indicators where we need to start working towards improving it so unless and until in a highly competitive environment people work towards connecting all the dots each and every point where the customer engagement happens uh, it is very very difficult to build a great brand good brand is okay doable but building a great brand brand means we need to have a very consistent experience across all the layers all the touch points of the customer and 
again what is more important on a customer experience is this is not additive i had a great awareness stage I, the experience was great consideration stage it was fantastic and the preference and purchase everything was okay okay this is not additive this is like our appraisals right whatever we did during the last quarter that is applicable only to last quarter what we did this year is what that counts it is exactly like that if the customer experience at say say for example the purchase point or a loyalty stage if that experience is bad the overall customer experience goes back to zero it is all multiplicative if you don't give a great experience the customer is just going to be not happy and it is very difficult to get back a customer who is already sulking right today when we have a large customers have huge amount of choices in a highly competitive industry today the customer has got more points of comparison we are not living in the 80s and 90s when license raj was there there are only four cars right the people were happy with ambassadors but doesn't mean that they were uh, kind of okay with it when the choices came today we have n number of options are available we have at least minimum 200 300 uh, options available when we go talk about an automobile and the the extent in which the customer is going to be kept happy is very very limited so the sensitivity is very very high dealer point customer walks in uh, and there is a waiting time of 3 minutes customer is not going to like it so it is becoming very very complex and difficult for brands to build customer loyalty and ensure that the customer remains happy they became advocates and they talk about uh, you know kind of uh, become an uh, promoter of the brands it's that extremely difficult so moving on the customer experience touch points that generate data i mean we talked about so many things earlier days uh, the whatever dealer does uh, nobody knows the ho is never likely to know how many people walked in what is their experience did they go back with a smile then people started writing questionnaires sending out sms asked them to fill up a form uh, how likely who would people are going to recommend today we have got tons of sources through which we are kind of going to generate uh, data it can be mobile application which page how many times the interaction happened how long people stayed the heat map we have a whole plethora of tools available to measure the customer experience at every layer we can even look at Uh, the waiting time how long it takes the app takes to respond how long the page takes to load right is where is the customer breaking apart uh, has there been any friction especially in e-commerce uh, the the cart abandon abandonment is a very very is a major problem for people people are working towards spending a lot of hours trying to solve it and see how they can minimize it even digital signage where how people are directed to one place or another for a, for a retail outlet are the boards very clear are they directing customers to the right spot these are all small things but they matter most okay the only person who can take liberty is our national highway authority where they don't put any boards we have to go and find out that there is a diversion whether to turn left or turn right only the government can have that kind of you know liberty to do that right customer feedback is very very important a bad customer does not give any feedback a silenced customer a silent customer is a deadly customer because neither we know what kind of which stage the customer broke away or the customer is taking the pain to come back and tell why the hell will i tell a brand if they don't even listen to me right so customer feedback is very crucial today people do write a lot about in social media the so social media sentiment analysis that is a very very important tool to measure what people are generally talking about what is the overall sentiment about the brand all that sources generate data we need to kind of take the data collect it make meaning out of it uh, and then come out come back and have a understanding of customer from the data point of view right so self service kiosk self service uh, tools are available the business intelligence can pull data from those uh, devices and then try to make meaning out of it so if you look at compared to the years before today we are sitting on tons of data the challenge is how are we going to analyze the data and kind of make meaning out of it so role of data in offering great customer experience data by in itself does not have any meaning it's a, it's a it's a bunch of data available how are we going to extract the data by processing the data take some information collate the information 
make some meaning. For to have a meaning, we need to know, understand the customer little intimately. And are we able to draw some insights out of it? Why a customer behaved so? Or what is the customer's pain point? What do I understand out of it? Right? With all this, with the insights, then it goes like a feedback loop. How do I go and solve a customer's problem? Right? With insight, it's always the, the design thinking principles applied over there, ideate and iterate. The cycle continues. Right? And the five C's for a great customer experience is care. We need to have that empathy, really to understand, do I really care? What is the customer's pain point? How much of the time we spend with the customers, really understanding what is their pain point? And are we communicating well? Am I compassionate? Am I really trying to solve or I'm, I'm looking at customer as a means of revenue? That's it. And all this has to be, cannot be like a knee-jerk reaction, but it has to be a very, very consistent, consistently done. I mean, what we do consistently is what becomes a behavior, and that behavior has its own outcomes. And the whole culture of the organization need to support great customer experience. If you do all that, I'm sure we can get it a great customer experience. As I told you, these are all multiplicative. It's not like additive. It's not like care plus communicate plus compassionate. It is care multiplied by compassion, multiplied by consistency. If any of the parameter is zero, net result is zero. How much ever we do right, the overall result is going to end up as zero. Okay, how, how are you going to use the data for great customer experiences? We have got multiple tools available. So starting with frictionless engagement. What kind of customer journeys can we create? Can I, can I create, apply design thinking principles for deeper understanding of customer pain points? Are we doing it? How much do we know about our customer? How much we know about customer's problem? How much of those customer's problem are we trying to convert that into opportunities? Trying to take to the next level of either relationship or experience or business. Uh, there are multiple tools available, like plotting customer journey maps, uh, points of customer engagement, how, where all they do, what all they do, what is the value of happening at each and every uh, plot point of the customer journey, and how do we reduce the cognitive overload at the user experience layer? Am I trying to make the product very difficult to understand, or can I give a WhatsApp-like experience? There is no university available who is teaching a course on how to access messages on WhatsApp. People learn it themselves. It can be a teen, preteen, or it can be a 70 year old person who just want to connect with uh, friends and relatives. Right? Today, WhatsApp is brilliantly used. I mean, they have, they offer a great uh, UX. Uh, I mean, it is very easy for everybody to understand. Do, do our products have such kind of user experience? And we can always measure the results and modify, keep iteratively doing it until the result is achieved. The next layer is the active learning layer. Okay, what do I learn from the customer experience, right? How do I learn? It can be, can I hyper-personalize a customer experience? Can I create an offer or can I create an experience which is so personal to the customer that what I create for person X is entirely different for person Y and the person Y and X both feel that the brand is talking to them in a personal one-to-one -to -one tone. That is, people are doing it. The banks have already gone to that level. So they analyze the data, they figure out some customer is drawing too much of money, they say, do you want a loan? I mean, that is where the nudges are coming as far as the digital banking is concerned. And can I create a customized, a contextualized customer learning, right? Uh, put the customer learning in context. What is that customer is trying to do? Can I go and give a very contextualized help, right? And use the feedback loop to improve the customer. We, nobody can get it right when, when we, as a digital uh, practitioner or digital our analytical practitioner, all we see is a bunch of data. We are not talking to the customer in front and trying to understand what they are trying to say. We need to analyze data repeatedly, make some assumptions, go back, validate, test it, and then do it iteratively. Then we will be able to crack data uh, sitting here. And there are a lot of tools available like Qualtrics, Medallia, right, Zendesk. There are all tools available which can, be, which, which can help us learn from the, what the customer is trying to say. And moving on to the next area is the sentiment measurement, measuring satisfaction. Earlier we used to have NPS, CSATs used to be the earlier term, now people are moving towards the net promoter scores. And the sentiment analysis as well as social media tracking. We also need to see after at every point of customer interaction, where do we go and see it? And for e-commerce player, response rates, churn rates, cart abandonment, these are all very, very critical parameters of measurement. And 
I mean this is exactly we will tell uh, what the customer is doing, but it does not say why the customer is uh, kind of uh, why did he, abandon, he or she abandon the card. So, they, we need to go and figure out is there a tech issue or is there a behavioral issue, is there an understanding issue. So, people need to go back deep and solve it. Technology and enablement happens through brand watch. We have tools like mentioned analytics. There are tools available. People can use it to kind of reach there. The last one is the conversational conversations, especially the conversations still give us a contextual awareness. I, is my experience consistent? If I talk to a human, the experience is fantastic. But when I go to the AI bot, the AI bot is so, at times so stupid, it asks the basic stuff and says that now you go back and talk to a human agent. So today, the efforts is going on trying to improve the bot experience and try to minimize the human bot transfer, and you know, bot transferring the call to the human agent, so that uh, the bot also learns which call they transport to the human, why did they do it, and what is the learning they can do, how they can tailor make that experience. So at every layer, digital is, a, is the lowest cost as far as a transaction or a behavior is concerned, and the human interaction is the most expensive one. So they want to keep the most expensive, the industries want to keep the most expensive interaction for a worthwhile customer, and they want to keep it really minimum, right. And the fundamental thing is that are there, is the customer understanding right? Has there been a clear understanding, uh, exchange of information, is there knowledge being provided? And there are a lot of omni-channel experience tools available. Uh, like even people are moving up to the next layer using the LLMs, the large language models, trying to see if they can use it and replace. Instead of giving a very standard response, can I give a more empathetic response? Can I give it more human-like response? Today there are voice conversations. It's very difficult to identify whether I'm talking to a human or a bot. That is the level people have moved up as far as the voice conversations are con concerned. So all these are kind of all cyclical. They are all like take input, uh, input, process output, and again the output forms as an input, and this is very, very cyclical. They create a huge flywheel effect in terms of customer experience. It is very difficult to get the first experience right. Right, First time itself I cracked it, and I brought a great customer experience. It doesn't happen. One need to be patient, one need to be consistent, and we need to kind of keep learning from how do I improve, what do I learn, how do I improve to the next level. Unless the customer obsession is there, it is very difficult to create a great customer experience out of data. So, we also have challenges. Today, when we talk about data, earlier data was available freely. Even today, when we go and buy some, uh, go to pharmacy, they still ask for the mobile number. They, they keep tracking our data. But with the data production and data privacy bill coming in, it is uh, very, very uh, you know, important and sensitive what kind of data we are handling it. Because today, the bill provides power to the hands of the consumer, that is the data principle, right? Uh, what data to collect, how long to keep it, uh, how long you want to use it, who all will you share to, and, and it also even goes to the extent of killing the data, okay? After the purpose is over, are you destroying the data? How will are you destroying the data? So, earlier it wasn't there, so a lot of ambiguity people used to do the way they want it. Now, the bill is here, and if people don't follow or don't have a sensitivity to for managing the data and the for, for privacy reasons, uh, people can the people can pull data, they can go to the data production board and complain. The customers, today there are mechanisms being built. Things can take it to them. At the same time, we also see the other side of it. Data production is one side, which is in a way protecting the customer, bringing confidence and trust. So it is okay. But the more uh, incident, more bothersome ones are the ones where we have rising incidents of data theft. Okay, data being scrubbed away, you know, we cannot keep blaming that the data was lost in the cloud or the vendor lost it. Finally, uh, as a brand, we are all responsible for uh, the data what we handle. And uh, what is worrisome is that there is an 18% increase in cyber attacks. Every organization goes through it. There are data which talks about every uh, uh, hour we are talking about 16 accounts getting compromised in India. Every corporate is getting attacked. I mean, I'm sure the CISO forums will definitely talk about it. So these are our challenges when we try to look at data. So it's not like using data freely, but we need to use it more judicially. So the summary is that the literate of the 21st century, I'm trying to modify, 
Alvin Toffler's uh, uh, statement. Illiterate of the 21st century is not the person who cannot read or write, but the person who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. The, the, today we are in the phase. The technology life cycle is hardly about five, six years. Sixth year, seventh year, there is a totally new thing coming up. We need to go back and learn all the stuff. But since in the context of this forum, uh, the illiterate organizations are the ones who cannot use customer data, learn, unlearn, and relearn from the data. Thank you so much. I think I have over by a few minutes. Um, can I take a question or two? If you are open to the floor for any questions. Hello, uh, Vishweshan. Thank you for a very engaging presentation here. So one of the pet peeves that I have uh, in interacting with the customer service and customer success departments all over the spectrum, not just banking or e-commerce or anything, all over the spectrum is basically, see, when you go talk to someone with your problem, they said, you know, they said with all sincerity, we'll get back to you soon and all that kind of stuff, right? Then when you don't get an answer, when you go back, uh, my whole context is lost and I have to explain the same story again like for 15 people, right? In this way, what I've found is uh, uh, the systems, generative AI systems like ChatGPT or any other language models, the context is preserved at least, right? When I go chat in the same context again, it remembers. Like, like, like that, I mean, like, are there any efforts that are uh, being taken in the services industry uh, from a from a data driven perspective, right? I have this whole data. I could find sentiment of the customer when they spoke to me last time, another executive, for example, right? So, do we do anything on that sort? Okay, um, I am on the stage, so I have the responsibility of uh, <laughs> talking the truth. Okay, if I were talking like a vendor, I would say, oh, we analyze the sentiment. Uh, our tools will help you kind of uh, understand the pulse and all that. Practically, I think people are not reached that stage yet. Today, a human agent themselves are not able to solve. They are not able to go through the history, try to stitch together the overall picture of what the customer experience had been, and then try to solve a problem. It doesn't happen for a human agent. So if you expect a, a bot or a LLM to kind of understand and have that empathy and do that, I think we are still far away. Maybe when I say far away, it could be months, it could be years. right? Uh, when we talk about the context, what they are talking about, preserving the context, is that the earlier bot used to be very, very transactional. It is like a, a query and a response. I fire a query, I get a response, that session is over. Right? Here, what happens is here, it kind of understands, okay, last time when you, when we spoke about this, so the, the bot also looks at, takes it as an input parameter of the previous conversation and tries to give a response accordingly. Right? How exactly it is going to work, I am sure people are not cracked that piece yet. Because today, the LLMs use about 100 plus billions of parameters to kind of analyze it. Today, it is very, very computing intensive. Right? Uh, and today, if as an organization, if I were to use an LLM, how do I use it? I will give the whole history, context, uh, maybe the user manual, and the whole stuff. And it is going to assemble and put it in a human language uh, based one. That's about it. It is not going to go out of the loop and say, go search the internet and try to come back and give a solution. It is not going to do that. So essentially here, what it talks about is preserving the context from, okay, I, you spoke about last time you had this problem. It will factor in as one of the parameters. How much of weightage it is going to do depends on the person who is going to use the LLM as a part of their customer service option. I mean, that is still people out to experiment and figure out. It varies from industry to industry. Uh, sometimes people can give talk about a uh, numerator, uh, numerical value. How much of that value needs to carry forward? It varies from industry completely. So it's still a long way to evolve. Yeah. Can I pause the mic? Hey, um, I'm Aparna. A quick one. So you mentioned um, silent customers like the deadliest, right? While I agree, I also maybe disagree. Uh, what I mean that is I kind of find unhappy customers way louder than the happy ones, um, just in terms of feedback, right? So how do you factor that some a set of customers don't really talk about the positives in when you use data for customer experience? Uh, can you phrase your question again? Say it again? How do you factor in that 
positive feedback isn't necessarily always given when you use data for customer experience. See, we need to take both positive as well as negative. We cannot take a biased view that any feedback is a negative feedback, not necessary. A customer who's giving a five star and four star, four star, just compliment yourself, you've done a great service, right? Customer who is below three, three, two, and one, okay, these are the customers to really watch for. Three are people who are tentative. They are like people on the fence. Uh, some organizations uh, still uh, treat three as a two, right? Some people say, no, no, I want only five star. If you go to any automobile service showroom, they will say any rating uh, eight or low is considered to be a bad service. So they will keep asking you to say, please rate higher. So these kind of gamifications people also do. So when it comes to a positive experience, uh, a positive customer, we also need to understand what did we do right to the customer. Are we maybe looking at 10 different positive customers, we can easily figure out what are we doing right. Not necessarily we have to kick ourselves all the time saying that, you know, how do I improve? I mean, sometimes we do offer great service, let's accept it. And wherever we have area or scope for improvement, let's work towards that. Hope it answered. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for the time.